God ultimately doesn't care about civilization. I mean, literally, right? Jesus didn't say, I have come into the world to be a ruler and I'm going to create a perfect kingdom and everything is going to be right. Well, okay, he did. But what, what was the kingdom that he proclaimed? The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. That is his kingdom. Now, there would be a temptation there to say, okay, yeah, the kingdom of heaven, that is just in heaven, right? That's not on earth. But no, we say that the kingdom of heaven is truly present on earth through the Eucharist, right? Because the king is there and he is coming with all of the solutions that we need, but they come to us by receiving the Eucharist. It's not like receive the Eucharist and then, you know, you're going to know exactly what to do to fix all the world's problems. But this is the Lord's strategy. And this really is a strategy that we have to, to contemplate very deeply. I'm coming to you and I want to fix you. And, and I want to fix your neighbor who's kneeling next to you in the pew and your wife and your kids and your boss. You're, you're all here worshiping together. And I'm coming inside of you to make you into myself. And so when you go back home, you should be different in your family life. And when you go to work, you should be different. And if there's enough of you that I'm fixing from within then you should really be able to make a difference in the world. I mean, it's actually a heresy to say that Christ doesn't want to fix the world. But we have to know how he wants to fix the world. He cares more about souls than about civilization. And by fixing souls, he will fix the world. And he's done it before. So once again, this is not hypothetical. We know how the Lord does this. How did he build up civilization in the West before? Through monasteries people seeking God before all else. And when we seek God, we, we open a, a, a doorway to him. The more people who are devoted to the Eucharist and are giving their lives over to the Eucharist, we're opening a door to our own lives, to our families, to our work, and yes, to our civilization. That's not just throwaway. Like, you read this book because you wanted a blueprint for fixing civilization, and, and then at the end, I'm like, well, God doesn't really care about civilization. I'm sorry. No, that's not the <laughs> point of this. But the point is that, that really it is, the, you know, starting from the foundation. Our, our civilization has worn down to the foundation. It, we need a proper foundation. And the Eucharist and, and our prayer, our encounter with Christ is that foundation. I mean, isn't that our faith? That without Christ, we can do nothing. That's what he tells us. But with him, we can do anything. We, we literally can. He says... You know, you will do greater things than these. What does that mean? What well, greater miracles than he performed during his life? You will do greater things than these. Do we have faith in that? Do we really believe that if we receive the Eucharist, we can do greater things than Christ did in his public ministry? So maybe we need greater faith first. And we need to get our lives in order. We need to get our family in order. We need to get our work in order. And this is a very important thing. We need to get our local communities in order. Because we tend to think like, well, you know, you know, we really, we just need to fix Western civilization as a whole, or we just need to fix the church as a whole, or we just need to fix our country, or we need to fix this particular political party. No, get your parish in order, get your family in order, get involved in local politics. Because I think we've seen the last few years, local politics can make a big impact. There are meaningful and impactful things that we can do, and that's how God works.